Hey everybody, I'm Jason Peacock. Welcome back to Jason Talks Games. Let me start off with some news coming out of Gamma going on in Las Vegas this week. That would probably be Plat Hat Games just announced another Dead of Winter expansion. This is called Dead of Winter Warring Colonies. What it is, is two separate games of Dead of Winter is going on. If you haven't heard of Dead of Winter, I'll explain how that works in a minute. But these two separate games will also be battling with each other. So very interesting. I don't think I'll ever get a player count high enough to play a game like this, but I'm fascinated by how it goes. Now, Dead of Winter is a cooperative game, in a sense. Now, there is a possibility that someone is trying to betray you. There is also everybody's own secret objective that might get placed further ahead the priority ladder than the whole group's objective. It's a zombie-themed game where everybody is um, basically in this colony. There's a bunch of locations outside of the colony that you go to looking for supplies. There's the gas station, the police station, the school, the library. Each of these places has a deck of cards. Depending on where you go, you might find more food than guns, or you might find uh, uh, some gasoline more than anything at the gas station. You can also find other survivors to add to your group. Traveling is very dangerous. Anytime you want to travel somewhere without spending gasoline, you roll this red dice. This dice can kill that traveling character in one roll, and that drops morale. You need to have enough food gathered to feed everybody every round. You need to watch out for the zombies piling up at these different locations. And the fascinating thing about this game is the crossroads system. It's a deck of cards that the player before you picks up and reads. Now, there might be a trigger on this card. If so-and-so controls this character, then you would read it, and generally that person or the whole group would have to make a choice. It really just adds so much theme to this game. So, Plat Hat Games, Warring Colonies. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more about how this one works. I'm a big fan of Data Winner. All right, so let's just jump into what I've been playing lately. Uh, Hit Z Road is an auction game that I love from last year. I believe I had it number 10 or so in my... Uh, Top 10 2016 games up on the Dice Tower. You can see it in my linked Dice Tower podcast below. But anyways, it's a little auction game where the players are bidding their precious resources to pick the location they want to go to, represented by two cards. Now this combination of cards is going to have zombies you have to fight. It's going to have resources that you get, plus other tokens or just plain old bad or good things that happen to you. It's... um. In addition to an auction mechanic, you also have these uh, this party and you have to roll dice and fight off zombies on each of these cards. You can completely get eliminated from this game. Um, if you do, then you, you're out. It's not a terribly long game and usually the game doesn't go on too much longer after people start getting eliminated. The idea is to have the most points by the time you get through the entire deck of cards, which means you've reached Los Angeles. I've played the game five or six times and I still haven't made it through the deck. It is hard. You need your resources for like running away from a fight, for uh, um, for your gasoline. You can use ammo bullets to take preemptive shots on a horde of zombies. You don't lose people if you kill all the zombies with guns. And you have adrenaline which lets you save guys from a bite on a dice roll or get an extra kill on a dice roll. Now, if you spend your resources too willy-nilly in the beginning, it is going to come back and burn you. There's agonizing choices and decisions in this game. I love it. I finally got to introduce it to my wife, and she loved it. So I'm hoping to bust this out at uh, an upcoming game group pretty soon. So that's Hit Z Road by designer Martin Wallace. Okay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past. Um, if you guys have been watching these, I've been talking about it a lot lately because I've been playing this game a lot. It's in the similar vein as Conan, another one of these one versus many games I've been playing. It's just a really well-balanced little skirmish fight of a game similar to Conan where the bad guys you have are all 
pre-arranged on the board, kind of like a, I don't want to compare it to chess, but where you put your pieces is important. Of course, there's dice rolling, but there's a lot of tactics and decisions in the game. It's super thematic too. You have all your Ninja Turtles with special abilities. You've got turtles leaping from rooftop to rooftop. Ninjas running in. It is a great one of these one versus many games. A game I passed up on the Kickstarter. I just assumed it was going to suck. My brother got the game with the, the big works edition and then I kept reading reviews on how good this game was. So I jumped on board and it hasn't disappointed. I love these thematic one versus many type games if they are done properly. And I like that you can play your hardest as the bad guys. It's not... If you take a game like Descent or Imperial Assault, the most common complaint about these types of games is that you kind of have to be a host to the players. When you've got Conan and Ninja Turtles and the others, all games I've been talking about lately, this one bad guy versus all the good guys mechanic. The thing that stands out with these games is you get to go as hard as you want as the bad guy. Your job is to kill those suckas. So I really like the fact that you play hard and you try and win. Okay, um, World of Yoho. This game I haven't busted out in a while. My son has to play it. It's essentially just a game board. It's a huge game board, and your phone represents your ship. You actually put your phone onto the board, and the background of your phone uh, matches the background of the board. When you move your phone, you watch your little ship sail from things, so the background islands all line up and stuff. Uh, at two players, it's not terribly exciting. You can pick how many points you want to play, but uh, there was a big update on the game. There was 30 new missions. My son and I still had a blast playing. You uh, you can stop and port and load up on items, and uh, and then you get in a fight with another ship. And it's when you have a battle happen, you pick the weapons you're going to send in a fight. If you end up throwing the anchor and uh, boarding the ship and going into close combat, then any cannonballs or something like that that they might have picked uh, would get wasted. So it's a really crazy paper rock scissors kind of. Uh, a battle and you can see your cannonball go from one phone into the other uh, it's a really cool game I was very happy my son uh, suggested playing this because uh, uh, we probably played two or three game yeah we played two games of it maybe three and uh, the more we played the more familiar we started getting with the different missions the more um, you have to get familiar with this game because you can see what the other player's score is, and if you're experienced at this game, then you really have to try and pick missions that is going to hurt your opponent. Like, if he, if if Hayden is 100 points ahead of me, then I'm going to want to go to port, and I want to get a mission that is something to involve stopping him from doing his mission, fighting him in a combat or something like that. Um, really interesting game. I don't know if it's sold all that well, um, it's too bad, but a, a cool mix of technology and analog gaming. The World of Yoho. Another game my son suggested that I hadn't pulled out in a while, and that's Mice and Mystics. Now, when I first got this game two, three years back, I was really excited about it. I loved the theme and the storytelling, and I thought it was a fun game to play with my son. We played through the whole uh, first campaign over the course of a year or two and my like of the game started to wane because I really felt like um, you're really just moving around and rolling dice and my son was you know six seven at the time and I was basically in charge of my mice the special abilities in the cards and reminding my son everything he can do when we played this time, he's definitely evolved so much in reading and everything else this year that he was completely in control of his own decision making, his own special abilities, and this really turned into a game. It was so much fun. Wow, like, Mice and Mystics just went, I can't wait to play it again. We're going through the Heart of Glorum expansion, kind of like the undead theme, and... Uh, 
it's just a different game when I just have to focus on what my mice are doing and we're using our different abilities to help one another or counter the situation. And watching my son make these smart tactical decisions is just awesome. So mice and mystics, glad my son uh, rejuvenated my love for this game. And finally, the last game I'm going to talk about is Codex, Card Time Strategy. This is Serlin Games' answer to Magic the Gathering. It doesn't do anything terribly new to the genre. It's like, you've got 20 hit points, I've got 20 hit points, I'm going to play my cards and destroy your base kind of thing. But the game is so well designed, so balanced, it's non-collectible, so you get all of the... Unless you buy the deluxe box, you still have to get the different expansion decks for it. I think there's uh, there's uh, two expansions, the main set and a starter set. And uh, what you you have three heroes of different schools of magic. So just say I'm playing red, I'll have three red heroes of three different kinds of magic. And you have a binder. You are starting with your 10 card deck, so it's a deck builder as well with the uh, the dueling decks thing. So as you as you play the game, you are taking cards out of your binder, putting them into your discard pile, which come up later. There's so many decisions to make in this game. What school of magic do you specialize in once you uh, once your technology reaches a certain point? I can talk a lot about this game, um, but I won't do that right now. I'm just giving you a little tidbit of it. Um, I'll be talking about it more sooner. My my wife was a little intimidated to play it. Uh, she ended up kicking my butt, and she really enjoyed it, which is awesome. I'm just like, yes, she liked it a lot. So one of my favorite games of last year, Codex Card Time Strategy. If you haven't heard it, heard of it, uh, definitely look into it. If you're a fan of Magic the Gathering or any of those kind of games, the game is amazing. All right, so I'll let you guys go. Thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumb up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you soon.